Hello, in this tutorial, I want to talk about learning techniques for software engineers, how to learn coding. The reason behind this is because I have some software engineering friends. So I'm a physicist. That's why it's a little bit different from my approach. I have friends who are software engineers and they have a very weird approach to, well, for me, it is weird and it's just not very efficient and not so much fun. And that's the main thing. It's also more, I'm trying to give you some idea of how to make learning more fun, more effective, and also to motivate you, to help you to get some idea, because otherwise you have a false understanding of how your brain works, how um, things are attached in your brain, which means that you're, that you're set up for disappointment later on, because you're expecting something else and your brain just doesn't do it what you want to do it. So... In this tutorial, I would prefer to see it of how can you hack um, your brain a little bit so you're more efficient in learning and it's more fun. So we, you already see here in this tiny little graphics, I drew that myself, um, some of the things I want to talk about. So we have how can you learn depending on your level, because this also depends on what resources are best suited for you and your personality. Then a little bit about the mindset. And in this case... I do like to talk about mindful learning. The idea behind this is having a turbo boost, a, a turbo button to uh, kickstart your brain. How you can uh, manipulate and think in a way that your brain is more efficient and not just rushes through information without ever grabbing any information. And then I also want to talk a little bit about the learning pros progress. Um, because this, if you understand this, it helps you be more to just push through certain phases where you just don't see results. So this is quite important to understand how learning a skill actually looks like. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the level that you're on. So you see here, I have a permit. So this is a learning permit. On the lower level, we have a beginner level. So a beginner has no way of understanding, has no map in his head to understand the different concepts. So usually people are, who are beginners struggle getting an overview, which means that it's best to have a clear roadmap ahead of things to, um, to work on, because you don't want to jump around and otherwise things are too wobbly in your head. And the other thing is, if you're progressing more to intermediate and advanced level, what is more interesting for advanced is critique. So this is these expert discussion discussions. So you see a lot of experts coming together, talking about their own fields, discussing the small things, a lot of details and critique. So at this level, at the advanced level, it's really fun. But if you critique a beginner, it's really disastrous because at that level, people don't have any clue what you're talking about most of the time. They just want to have a clear yes or no answer. They just want to have a clear, am I on the right path? or not. And at that beginner level, it's really important to have some feedback. And this is why it's more advisory to have some mentor or personal teacher who tells you, and not in a school way, teacher who tells you how good you are, not with grades, but with words of, okay, you, this is a section you might have a look at or this. And another consequence on, depending on your level is what kind of resources you might prefer. And I have here two different categories. So we have curated content. It's very high quality and lo longer. So there's a clear overview of what's going on. So you might have, this might be books, uh, boot camps, online courses, or also guided courses. If you want to have more personal mentor or cohort based courses where you can meet in a group together once a week. I think this concept might help quite a lot of people, but it depends on your personality. It, these drawings are really not that amazing. You can, there's three different ways of being motivated of going through a course or a book. And some people are self-motivated. So like I'm very self-motivated. For me, it's usually I want to, uh, I, I see what, where I want to go, what level I want to reach. So I compete with myself. In this case, it's good to have for me, books are quite fine and online courses, but if you're more competitive and you really need to have somebody to, to uh, play against, then this boot camps might be a better option or just personal contacts. You need to have some fellow students to compete against. 
because this is the main motivation to go to the course to get better than to be better than the other guy. And the last one is if you're more social person to just be you don't go to the course or to the boot camp because you want to learn it. It drives you more to be with your fellow students, to exchange, but you need to have people on your same level. And that's why I think this boot camps or this core basis courses might be a better option for you. And all of these curated, higher curated content is good if you're on a beginner. Usually, if you're on the advanced level, you might not be interested in this too much. Maybe books, because you're more independent of which content you want to have and which order. And for me personally, I think tutorials, so single pieces of content is more better suited if you're already on the intermediate level or higher. Or YouTube videos, because you already understand enough to know which ones are good ones and which ones are bad ones. If you're a beginner, you're just like lost in all the uh, information. And the same is for the um, official Apple documentation. As a beginner, you there's no way you can deal with this yet, but you will get there in the end. It's just a matter of time. It's an evolution to start with very highly curated content to more variations of smaller pieces where you can dig into more detailed parts. So just think of yourself what you prefer more, what level you are and what is more attractive to you. I would like to now continue talking about the mindset. So there's a lot of different approaches. And I think the most typical one for developers, what I heard is build as many projects as you can. This is kind of true. I would add a little bit different to this because if you build a lot of smaller projects, you might end up building the same features all over again. So they are not really, there are a lot of small, simple projects. And also you, if you've built a whole project, some of them are just, it's just all over. It's just repetitive. You want to have, you want to explore features that you haven't yet been exposed to, haven't yet tried. So one thing is to have less projects with more advanced features or just to have, you just build, a, you don't build the whole thing. You just build one part of a project of an app, one screen or one login part, because th this makes it easier to concentrate on the one that you want to learn on, that you want to experiment with. And this is the main thing for me, because I see learning as a experiment, I'm a physicist, but it's more the, oh, I have a new tool. I can play with this tool. What can I do with this tool? What does it mean? If you approach seeing some new piece of code and a way of asking yourself a lot of questions of where could I use this? Why did I actually do it in a way? How can I experiment with this? What kind of small variations are possible out of the box or other things? Just make a, not just make a button, but add a shadow to the button, background color, font, have a look at how you would do your own button, what's special about these different buttons. Because then in this moment, it's getting more fun because you're more active. And when I said mindfulness before, you, you're not just a passive listener to any tutorials anymore, because at the moment you're like, you have this view or this button and you're starting to think, yeah, is this the only solution? Is there a better solution? Why is this one? Why is he choosing this one for this situation? And this is a way of making your brain work a lot more. This is questions are the thing that make your brain work because your brain is basically a problem solution machine. If you have a tutorial where they just show you A to Z all these steps and they just say, put it here, put it there, put it there, put it there, write this here. Your brain goes, okay, there's there's no, nothing to do for me because it's already solved. Why would I do anything? Your brain uses 20% of your energy consumption. So your brain tries to optimize this and keep it on a low level. If you have a something that is already solved, no need to do it. If you have a question or a maybe, then your brain decides to uh, kick off. This is a moment where your brain says, okay, now it's worth my effort. Because there's a question, something that I can add to. And this is also very important to uh, be more critical of everything that you see. Because that's the moment where you're like, maybe things are not as as it seems. Maybe things need to be shifted a little bit. So try, if you see some tutorial, to be more active by asking question, why? Where could you use it? Um, usually, I that's why I do that in my own tutorials. I always have like five different examples and discuss different ways of using it because this is in the this is also more what you would 
needed in the end to build the project. You are in a situation, you have the problem, and then you need to decide which of my tools would be useful in this situation. You can also have a look, just Google the same button, and you can also just Google and look for what other people do with the same tool. You can have a look at different examples on GitHub, or just Google different implementations of a button, and have a look at what is possible. So it's more research-oriented learning. But it's also more fun because you're more like an explorer of new technology and new tools. Then the other thing is that I haven't talked about, then the other thing is how do you think like a developer and what you actually want to achieve with this is understanding the conventions of your programming language or of your ecosystem. So it's good to understand the best practices of for example, the Swift programming languages of naming conventions of writing clean code, because this helps you to interact, to work with other developers. And the best thing is to pick somebody else's brain, to listen to their thought process. And that's when usually a lot of people say that it helps if they see somebody else doing a coding review of their own code to see, okay, maybe shift this a little bit need to be careful about this and this. So it's quite, it would be nicer if more tutorials had a talk more about why they do things and what they think, how they approach things. Unfortunately, not so many people like, I guess it's because developers don't like to talk so much. So think talking about what you're thinking is not the easiest thing. Um, moving on to learning. And the first thing is the opposite to learning, which is forgetting and I heard quite a few people saying that they go through a tutorial, the endless loop of tutorials. And when they start building projects, they have the feeling they forget everything or they haven't learned anything and they don't know what to do in the beginning. And the reason is if you're, there is one very efficient way of your, the way your brain stores information and that is by attaching it to the context. So you will if you have a new inf piece of information, you will remember it or by the situation you are in, by the environment, the room you are in, by what you are seeing. Which means if you learn only things from a tutorial, you remember it only for, oh, this was this and this app at this and this step. What you actually want to attach the information to is a more broader context, a context of what problems would I be in, would I have, to um, need this tool. And that's why I'm emphasizing so much think of use cases. What is the situation you would be in if you build a real project? How many times would you build, would you use a button? Probably quite a lot of times, but you can just have a look at the apps on your phone and see how many buttons there are, where they use them, how they use them. So context is super important. And that's why memorization is not the ideal thing because usually you're just learning things by heart without attaching it to the situations where you would need it, the context. So asking questions, where would it, where would I use this? Where would this be useful? Where have other people used this? So now I want to talk about how it looks like if you're learning a skill in contrast to theoretical knowledge. Most people are talking about a steep learning curve, which is more, I guess, exponential. But when you're looking at a skill, it's more you have over time, you have parts where you experience a steep incline in your skill set. Things start to click. This is the moment, usually it's like a jump. Things are really vague in your brain for some time and you really just don't grab it. And then suddenly it's one piece and things fit into place and you understand, ah, this is, this is how it works. But when you're learning a skill, these jumps are the exceptions. Most of the time you're struggling, you're, you don't see any results. This is because in this phase is your plat you're on a plateau. But it doesn't mean you don't learn anything. It just means that for this time you're, you're a bit, your skill is not there yet. You need to go through these plateaus in order to, to get to the jumps, to actually see the main results. And the important thing is to remember to not get frustrated by a plateau. You're really trying hard to understand something for weeks and you just don't get it. And then suddenly it clicks. Understand that it, some things take a lot of time. And I did read some neuroscience papers or learning psychology papers. And looking at your neurons, they are not 
fix static pieces of hardware like in your computer. They're living, they can be more alive and more moving and they try to attach to each other in a way that your networking of knowledge is the most useful for you. And in order to uh, get the right connections, your neurons take some time. So there is a considerable amount of, there can be a considerable amount of consolidation phase. And the one time I experienced that myself is when I had to one, one of my studies, I on purpose failed the exam, which I probably shouldn't have done. And I had two months between my, the second exam where I didn't touch it any at all. I didn't, I didn't open any books or my notes. And after two months, I opened it and I was like, okay, I remember this one I had problems to understand with. So I went through it and I was like, wait a minute, this is, what's the problem? This is really clear. This, 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 yeah, yeah. What, 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 why, why did I struggle with them, with this in the first place? And the reason is because I actively didn't do anything during these two months, but my subconscious brain was still working on it because initially I struggled so much that there was a strong impulse for my neurons to fix it, to uh, consolidate and to uh, arrange things properly. So sub my subconscious, my brain, with me actually having to do some work, did the rest of it to, uh, to get me to a level with a deeper understanding. And I'm giving this example because usually you just, you don't realize it because you're constantly working on it. But this kind of consolidation phases are, can be very useful for you to be more effective in your learning. That's why this spaced learning works so well, because you're giving a small impulse of information that you want to process and your brain still works on it for half an hour afterwards or on a higher level and then for even months or weeks, depending on how much you want it, how much you're initially working on it. So what I'm trying to say is be more patient. You will get there in the end and it's a good way to saying if you're thinking oh I don't understand this yet that's the most important word you don't understand it yet <laughs> and with this I want to finish I hope you could gain some information from this if you have a question to one of them just let me know in the comments if you like this video give it a thumbs up see you next time happy coding